So Intel Arc Pro has officially hit the number one spot in workstation graphics card sales. I stumbled upon this website and various other resellers which are mentioning that this card is now a best seller even beating Nvidia's GPU cards. I also received a couple of emails from you guys specifying exactly the similar things. So in this video, I'm going to give you a real picture as what exactly is happening and if you should buy this GPU card or not. That is totally my opinion. Of course, you are free to do what you want. So let's get right into it. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and also consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. By the way, we already have covered this GPU card which you are talking about which has become a best seller. Arc Pro B50 around a couple of weeks ago so do check that video out but I am going to give you the full end to end picture as we have more information now about this card. So as I said on various reseller websites this has become a best seller. On paper that sounds like big news. Intel finally has a, a GPU in the professional space that's making headlines. But here is the thing, just because it's at the top of the workstation charts on few of the websites doesn't mean it actually a good alternative to our good friends at Nvidia or even AMD for that matter or some of the Huawei cards there, especially if you care about AI workloads. Let me break it down very quickly as why I am saying that. <clears throat> Look at this. Uh, spec sheet here. This is a small form factor dual slot card. The big selling point here is efficiency on these 70 watts of power. Powered entirely by the PCIe slot, no external connector needed. That's fantastic for workstation with tight power budgets. But let's be real 70 watts and 224 GB per second of bandwidth just aren't going to cut it if your goal is to have a serious AI training or even doing an inference with medium to large model. That simply won't work. Maybe sub 2 billion model might work, but I don't think so. Anything over that would be decent enough to be running globally. <clears throat> but then you might ask why it's number one and I will drop the link to this website in video's description. By the way, they are not the sponsors of the video. And I have nothing to do with this website. The sponsors of this video are our good friends at iGent, who is the world's first multi-agent workforce desktop application that empowers you to build, manage, and deploy a custom AI workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks. So getting back to this card and why it is, um, why did it hit the number one in sales? <clears throat> I think this is less about performance and more about the market conditions. The B50 is cheap, readily available and Intel is pushing hard into the workstation space. It's being adopted because it's affordable and efficient, not because it's outperforming Nvidia or AMD in workloads that actually matter to AI developers. <clears throat> and let's not forget, we are talking about sales number in the workstation card category which is a much smaller market to mainstream consumer or data center GPUs. So number one doesn't mean hundreds of thousands of units. It could be only a few hundred sold and specific to only that website. So it is okay to be excited about alternatives to Nvidia and I will be the first one to celebrate that because we need an affordable, cheap and available AI. But at the same time, we must, must not fall victim to something which is not entirely true in the whole spectrum of things. So if you look at Nvidia's comparison, because that is where the comparison and competition is, then let me show you another table, which will give you Nvidia's workstation lineup, which roughly loosely matches with this card. I think. Uh, and there could be others too. The closest comp competitors of this B50 card are NVIDIA RTX 
A1000 in A2000. Even the table is self-explanatory, but let's talk about it. If you look at the number, the B50 actually looks solid against RDX A1000 and even competitive with the A2000. It has more VRAM than both of these NVIDIA cards, slightly better AI throughput on paper and stays efficient at 70 watts. But here is the problem. AI isn't just about raw specs. NVIDIA has an entire ecosystem, especially around software, CUDA, TensorRT, CUDNN, um, PyTorch optimization that Intel simply, does, simply doesn't have it yet. Yes, the B50 supports Vulkan and SciCL, but those aren't the industry standards for AI research and deployment, and at least as of yet. The reality is, if you are building AI workloads, NVIDIA still has the developer ecosystem locked down. That makes even a weaker NVIDIA card more practical than an Intel card with slightly better specs. Unfortunately, that is the name of the game at the moment. So what exactly is Intel's issue here? Well, there are a lot of them. <clears throat> I don't think so, it is just hardware, it is scale and software. If you look at the hardware, the B50 is fine for light workstation tasks and maybe running very smallish local AI models or some models in quantized format. But for larger models, you need the B60 or even the dual GPU B60 Turbo with 48 GPU of VRAM. And we have covered that one too on the channel sometime back <clears throat> now software is a big big issue here in my opinion until intel builds out a developer ecosystem that rivals cuda the gpu will always be a pain to integrate into ai workloads no one wants to fight with compatibility just to run llama.cpp nvidia dominates not only because of performance but also because of availability intel's production is still low run and by the time they scale up, NVIDIA and AMD will already be two generations ahead. So what is the bottom line here? Well, there are a lot and lot of lessons. Um, yes, Intel Arc Pro B50 hitting the number one spot is newsworthy. No doubt about that. It shows there is some demand for alternatives in the workstation GPU market, especially cheap, efficient cards. But don't mistake this for Intel becoming a serious NVIDIA competitor in AI, in my opinion. If you're an AI researcher, developer, or even just someone running models locally, the B50, I don't think so, is a card for you at the moment. It is underpowered, lacks ecosystem support, and really just isn't designed for those workloads. Intel needs way, way more. More VRAM, more bandwidth, more availability, and most importantly, they need a software ecosystem to be a viable option against NVIDIA in the GPU market for AI. Until then, the B50 is more of a curiosity than a competitor. So that's my take on the Intel Arc Pro B50 becoming number one. It's a niche card for workstations, but don't expect it to replace NVIDIA anytime soon. Let me know in the comments, would you ever consider running AI workloads on an Intel GPU or are you sticking with Team Green for the foreseeable future. Please also like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Thank you for all the support.